It's about God, pa. It's about God. It's about God, pa. It's about God. It's about God, pa. It's about God. Yeah, I love you all. Check it out. Morning on my knees, praying, Father, please forgive me of my sins. We all need to be passing out tracks, helping those in need. This is not new. It's elementary. Do you disagree? The Bible is the key to new life in Christ. I can't wait to see heaven in its entirety. Place made just for me. New time on my knees. Praying, Father, please forgive me of my sins. We all need to be passing out tracks, helping those in need. This is not new. It's elementary. Holy Spirit in me. Never lie, never cheat. What Jesus did is guaranteed. He never charged the fee. He's one, he's not three. I hope you all agree. He's coming back for me. They nailed him to a tree. And he's VIP. Resist the devil, man. He has to flee. Hallelujah. Thank you for what you did for me. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning. Good morning. This right here is something that's very, very important. I actually do a TikTok every morning. I do prayers on the TikTok. And I got a person that wanted me to pray for them about struggling with pornography. And I said, you know what? That's something good to talk about today. So this one is called Overcoming the Struggle with Pornography. The struggle with pornography is real and challenging. Many people face this challenge today. It's important to understand that this struggle is not just a moral issue, but also a spiritual one. Pornography can cause a false sense of intimacy and can distort our understanding of human relationships and sexuality. It can lead to addiction, harmful relationships, and create an unrealistic expectation of a mate. 1 Corinthians 6 and 18 through 20, it says, Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own, You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. The effects of pornography are not just spiritual, but also physical. And physical, it could lead to feelings of guilt, shame, and even affect one's mental health. Y'all go with me to Romans 12 and 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Overcoming the struggle with pornography is possible through faith, prayer, and seeking help. It's important to remember that God's grace is sufficient for us and his power is made perfect in our weakness. James 5 and 16 says, Therefore, confess your sins to each other. Pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Remember, you are not alone in this struggle. Reach out to trusted individuals in your life. Seek professional help if needed. And most importantly, lean on God's strength and mercy. 
Remember Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Okay. Now I want to give you some steps. Six steps to overcome triggers and temptations. Number one, identify triggers. The first step is to identify what triggers the temptation. It could be certain situations, emotions, and even specific times of the day. Awareness is the first step towards change. Number two, avoid risky situations. If certain situations or environments increase the temptation, try to avoid them as much as possible. This could mean changing your routine, avoiding certain websites, or even changing the type of movies or shows that you watch. Number three, find healthy distractions. Engage in activities you enjoy and that can distract you when you're feeling tempted. This could be anything from reading a book, going for a run, playing a musical instrument, or spending time with loved ones. Number four, build a network. A support network. Share your struggle with trusted friends or family members who can provide support and accountability. You don't have to fight this battle alone. Practice mindfulness. Number five, mindfulness and meditation can help manage stress and increase your ability to resist temptation. It helps you to stay focused on the present moment and not get carried away by intrusive thoughts and number six if all else fails seek professional help if the struggle continues don't hesitate to seek help from a counselor or a therapist they can provide strategies and tools to cope and overcome addictions remember Overcoming temptation is not about willpower alone. It's about creating an environment and lifestyle that supports your decision to change. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. So stay strong and keep the faith. You're not alone in this journey. God is with you. And we'll provide a way out. Dealing with guilt and shame after giving in to temptation can be a challenging process. But it's important to remember that everyone makes mistakes. And that forgiveness and healing is possible. So here's seven steps that you could take. If... You gave in to the sin. Number one, acknowledge your feelings. It's okay to feel guilt and shame, but don't let these feelings consume you. They are a sign that you recognize something went wrong, which is the first step towards making things right. Number two, seek forgiveness. If your actions have hurt others, seek their forgiveness. Most importantly, seek God's forgiveness. He's merciful and forgiving. 1 John 1 and 9 says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just and he will forgive our sins and will purify us from all unrighteousness. Number three, forgive yourself. This could be the hardest step, but it's crucial. Remember, everyone makes mistakes. What's important is that you learn from them and make an effort to change. Number four, make amends. If your actions have caused harm to others, try to make it right. This could mean apologizing or taking actions to correct the wrong. Number five, learn to grow. Use this as an opportunity to grow. Learn from your mistakes and make a plan to avoid failing into the, and falling into the same patterns in the future. Number six, like we said before, seek support. Reach out to trusted friends, family, or mental health professionals. They can provide you with emotional support and practical advice on how to cope with guilt and shame. Number seven, pray. Prayer can be a source of comfort and strength. 
ask God for the courage to face your mistakes and the wisdom to avoid future ones. Philippians 4 and 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You know what? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you acknowledging our struggles and weaknesses. Ask for your forgiveness and for your guidance and strength as we strive to overcome the challenges we face. Help us to remember that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit and to honor you in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Trusting in God podcast. We will be back next Sunday with another one so please tune in we on all streaming platforms peace